Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you just might want to have in your own collection. So are you in the mood for something fun, colourful and that involves building your own city? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about Fortune City. Fortune City is a city building game that wants you to become the best mayor. On your turn, you can buy goods and construct buildings in your city. Each building when placed has a bonus and once placed will trigger adjacent tiles too. If you can, hire citizens that match your building colours and they'll allow you to move up on the matching income tracks. You can also have a delivery truck to collect the bonuses from your tiles and keep your city productive. The game ends when all tiles have been placed and the winner has the most victory points from their city and income tracks. Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, it's obvious that this is a game about building a city and is it a new theme? Absolutely not. It's one we're very familiar with. I'm, I'm pretty certain everybody's tried a city builder at some point by now. Um, however, what does distinguish this one just a tad is it feels kind of more family orientated than others and I think that's based in its entirety and just how adorable it actually is. Um, not only that, but this is the first time I've heard of an app becoming a board game, which is kind of an, an unusual transition. And I'm not sure if this helps or hinders the theme here or its production. So overall, this is familiar territory for most of us, um, except the game has the addition of this tons and tons of cuteness. Now, similar games to Fortune City, well, you have to think of things like Suburbia or Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Um, but for me, the way it utilizes its tile placement reminds me a lot of Glenmore as well. Thing two, mechanics. So Fortune City has some very distinct action phases. And I really appreciate that you go through the game step by step. It kind of allows you to plan ahead and get your ducks in a row. Now, the first thing you can do in a turn is you can buy goods or you can construct buildings. Um, and these basically are the different colored tiles and they'll come with a different colored meeple when they're all completely random how they're put together. Um, and basically what it means is that if you want a tile or a meeple of a very specific color, going first suddenly really matters because it is the best and only way to acquire them. I do like the fact that when you place your tile, it activates the tile around it. And that means that any goods that they may have written on the tile will suddenly become refreshed. Um, and this really makes you think more seriously about placement. Um, the tiles themselves though are unusual, I think, are definitely curious in the fact that some will give you negative points like dustbins and some will give you positive things like money or gems. And you have to deal with both of these. They both seem to be worth roughly the, the same, um, what, what you would call it, victory points at the end of the day. So I think it's unusual that part of what your job is is just dealing with difficulties. And it's not always just positives in your little city. Now, you hire citizens to each of your coloured squares um, and that allows you then to go up income tracks um, based on what colour you've matched. So if you match the pink meeple with the pink tile, you're going to be able to go up the, the pink track and that will give you more money each round. Um, the blue one allows you to make your little delivery truck go faster. See where I'm going here? So it means that the colours you have are incredibly important and it gives you something to work towards. I think it keeps you on your toes. It makes what colour tile and what colour meeple you have really important. It's not just about putting your city together. Now, the delivery trip portion um, is, is actually kind of fascinating because it really does shape how you build your city. So everybody has a little delivery truck and it's able to move one space around your little city and it can pick up and take away dustbins which are, which are worth negative points, but it can also pick up coins and gems that your buildings you've created you know, provide for you. Um, and it can only go on particular routes. So you need to kind of build your city around where your little delivery truck can go. Like overall, the mechanics are really quite clever and rather fun to play with but I'm not necessarily a fan of how random the tiles you can acquire are, simply because they're really important to the rest of your game plan. Thing three, on the table. So city builders, I think, have a tendency to look really great when they're set up, and Fortune City is absolutely no exception. And I really enjoy its use of kind of pastel colors, these weird giant headed meeples, it all makes it look very appealing. 
Overall, it doesn't take up a lot of space because you're each building your own little city and it takes about 40 minutes for two of us to play. The rulebook is good and nicely la laid out and we didn't have any problems following along with it. Overall, replayability wise, this game does feel similar with replete plays um, and that's despite the fact that there is a good variety of buildings that you can use. They often end up feeling the same apart from their colour. Thing for look and feel. Well, Fortune City is adorable, and you'll hear me use that word repeatedly to describe it. But apart from that, it's also appealing, I think, in all the right ways. Um, the colour choices are cute and fun, and when you add in those giant headed meeple people, it's another kind of level of lovely. The city tiles themselves also look really, really good, um, but I would have wished that the cardboard components were just a little bit thicker and mine are a little worked already. Overall, though, I think that the component quality is great and the addition of your own credit card really helps immerse you into the game. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Now, city builders are some of my favorite type of games. I think it's always really, really fun to create your own world and connect things together to build your own metropolis. And Fortune City does this with color and style. It may appear to be like other city building titles. However, I do think its mechanics make it stand out quite a lot. They're fairly interesting and I love how they all knit together to create for this kind of really fun experience. Now the use of the income tracks and the delivery truck, I think make for more considerate purchases and game plans. You need to do more than just place tiles to be able to win. Now, of course, your plans can be seriously thwarted by what goods you can purchase at the start of the round. And it's the game's most annoying feature, but one that is a feature in a variety of tile laying games, not just this one. Now, Fortune City is simple and elegant, but you know what? It's not gonna offer you tons of deep strategy. And anybody looking for that, I think will be a little bit disappointed. But one thing I can guarantee is that it will absolutely make you smile. Do I think you should have Fortune City in your collection? I think this game's an interesting one because if you want something cute and colourful and light, yes, it's all of those things. But if you also want something with kind of interesting decisions to be made that's kind of clever, this is also this game. I think it straddles this divide really, really well. So if you want something that's smart and yet easy and fun and cute, then this is what you should be checking out. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can hear about my latest videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Fortune City, let me know in the comment box below. And for more informative board game reviews, just keep watching.